Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trade .com, uh weekend update show. Happy June. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody is happy and healthy and living your best life, right? That's the only thing we get to ask of ourselves. If you are uh, brand new to us and you stumbled upon our channel, thank you very much for joining us, uh, spending 10, 15 minutes of your day. Hopefully you guys are doing great. Uh, the only thing I ask, if you could be so kind, just take one second. So all it takes, takes one second, hit the like button, uh, support the channel, subscribe, share, uh, and we will take care of the rest. So let's talk about the tape. So we'll talk about the last hour in a few minutes. That was uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely crazy. I, I think one of the most important things, obviously, um, you know, have it, having a process is a very, very big deal. Uh, going into the fight, knowing what you're going to do uh, is pretty much, um, you know, one of the secret sauces of having an advantage because if you already know uh, what you're looking for, it's much easier to accomplish uh, your goal. And, you know, I've always, I, I've always been in shock that a lot of new traders, um, they don't, unfortunately, don't have this foundation um, and they believe that they wake up, turn on the computers at, uh, you know, 920, 925 Eastern time, look at the hot stock of the day and that's their game plan. And then you hear this all the time on social media, um, you know, uh, play in your trade, trade your plan. If you're waking up five minutes to the open, you have nothing that, and you, you're looking at it are stocks that already put in 95 to 99 percent of their average true range and is that really a process right is that really uh something that is sustainable uh is that something that's scalable is that something that uh you can have a day-to-day -day age maybe you know day-to-day -day -day edge maybe it is maybe it's not but um i have been in every aspect of this business more or less with the exception of the option side or future side or probably a lot more sides but at the equity side i've been you know pretty much all over for the last 25 years and, and I will tell you this much, and this is kind of something that I've been saying for years. If you're not prepared from the night before, if you don't have your sentiment, your your opinion, your bias, your your channels, right? Your channels, in my case, I trade pivots. Um, I trade pivots to the upside. I trade to the pivots to the downside. Uh, my goal every single day is not to guess the closing price. My goal every single day is get my research, wait for that research to confirm the next day and win my interval. And if my interval extends into the close, hey, God bless, right? We did our job. But the point is we're not trying to guess the closing price. We're just trying to win our interval. And that's what it is. Uh, I am a channel trader. Um, I trade momentum heavy overnight if there is heavy momentum overnight on a specific, especially tech trade. But the most important part is I'm trying to win my interval in between the lines. And unfortunately, if you don't come into the trading day 100% dialed into what you want to do, you're going to be all over the place. Uh, your emotions, what well, we're all trying to keep in check, what well, we're all trying to uh, get rid of as fast as possible of our career, they heighten, right? They, they become heightened in, in nature. And when you're coming in unprepared, and you're looking at the hot stock of the day and you're turning around and go, well, that looks good. It's an emotional trait. You know, you have no uh, you have no opinion on the stock before the day started. You have no edge because again, well, you just found the stock 30 seconds ago. And now you are in a retail trade. You're in a crowded trade. And the post and, and most important part, and I say this every single time, if you believe, and I I do, uh, if you believe that 90 to 95 to maybe even 99 uh, percent of new traders. Okay, are not. I don't know what word I want to use. I don't want to use the word profitable. I want to use the, the word consistent in their thinking. Okay, so if you're part of the group that is emotionally all over the place and their you know, emotions are everywhere, and you're trading the same stock at the same time at the same interval because of the same news, 
you have no edge, right? You really absolutely have no edge versus somebody who's coming in and it could be any stock. It could be Amazon, it could be Nvidia, it could be Tesla. You already know uh, what happened the night before. You watch the option flow, you have all those boxes checked and you're just ready for that technical level to confirm without no emotions because you already have the data in front of you that is a much bigger edge than somebody wakes up in the morning and go, hey, this $2 stock is now at 19. Let me buy the $26 breakout pre-market highs. Yeah, maybe it works. Maybe it does. And, you know, again, I think you have a better shot of, uh, you know, putting, you know, drafting, uh, you know, DraftKings or, you know, DFS or all that stuff or go to Vegas, play a, a single handle blackjack. But it, again, this whole business is about preparation. Um, I, I, I'm 100% uh, convinced that those who are prepared always have the leg up. Doesn't make a difference how you trade, whether you're a swing trader, day trader, you trade Forex, E-minis, uh, option stocks, whatever the case, those are prepared because those are the ones that are sitting there patiently waiting for their thesis uh, to confirm. And if you are one of those uh, people who are in the 95, 99% that they're all over the place in the morning and uh, you know, your emotions are running wild and you're chasing and you're, you're anticipating. It's going to be a very, very tough time for for you to kind of get your career going. And unfortunately, we've been saying this all the time because so many people fall into that emotional roller coaster uh, lifestyle and your foundation based on uh, quote unquote hot stock of the day. Unfortunately, your career is probably two, three years because. You're, you're building so many bad habits that by the time that something clicks, you run out of money. It's just the reality. You run out of money and the solvency card comes, uh, you know, comes to be uh, pulled. So it's very, very important, guys. Again, I don't care if you train micro cap stocks, options, E-minis, Forex. You got to be prepared, man, because if you're not prepared, there is absolutely no reason to turn on your computer and expect anything uh, more than mediocrity, right? And that's the most important part. And that's a great segue to the the video. Uh, if you watched Thursday night's video, um, you know, we were prepared, man. We were super duper prepared for Friday session. Uh, again, all you need to do is go back to uh, the previous video. We talked about the importance. I, you know, again, I, I give very specific levels on the nightly videos on the cues when they become a macro point of interest. We talked about uh, we talked about this uh, 2 450 area. We said, hey, this is a big, big level. If this level gets pulled, all the stocks, and we went through a whole laundry list of stocks, Amazon, Microsoft, Meta, we'll talk about the pivots in a second, NVIDIA, if this level gets pulled, they all get pulled. And that's the point. Be prepared. Don't wake up at 9.30 and go like this, hey, NVIDIA looks weak. You got to have a game plan way before that, because by the time you say the video looks weak, this thing could rip up 10, 15 points in your face if you don't know your level. So again, get your ducks in a row, guys. Again, if, whether it's you're trading pivots, the PS60 theory or something else, make sure that you are prepared. So let's get into it, man. Crazy, uh, crazy week. You had a lot of violence uh, in the week. Um, you know, Friday was really good. Really, really good. Again, we'll get to the pivots in a second. Uh, if you look at the final numbers, they're really not going to uh, paint a picture. Uh, at the end of the week, you got the S&P down half of a percent, did not paint a picture. Uh, you had the Dow only down 1% for the week. And that is because we had an incredible rally uh, in the Dow. Absolutely. Look at this engulfing candle. The Dow is up 600 points. If they, you know, that was going down two or 300 points every single day and it rallied 600 points on Friday. And you talk about a roller coaster. Look at the NASDAQ 100. So the NASDAQ broke this 450 level that we talked about. I thought it was only going to go down a couple of bucks. Like I said, uh, in the Thursday's video, this thing went down all the way it, at one point that the queues went down to 443. I thought it was, they were going to stop at 448. Like I said, a lot on Thursday's video. They went down to 443, and the recovery in the last hour was absolutely phenomenal. Somewhere around three o'clock, I logged off early. We had a really good morning. Um, we'll get again. We'll get to the pivots in a second. I was like, "Listen, I'm done for the day." Um, but look at this. You mean look at this rally? Not just in the Nasdaq and everything else. The Nasdaq was down, I think, 250 points at one point. And we went green on the day. We went green because the NASDAQ 100, the Qs, 
They literally went from the bottom channel of 445 at 3 o'clock all the way up to four, almost 452. Just an, an incredible roller coaster in the last hour. If you traded in the last hour, um, that's cool, man. Again, I was done. I was literally done by 1030. I was done. I needed a mental break. I had a great lunch. I went swimming. I went to the gym. I had an awesome... Every single time I wanted to take like a half a day off and get a massage, it's always booked. I always got to think ahead, but uh, it is what it is. But uh, ultimately, crazy action. Uh, the bull thesis is still very, very much uh, you know, in play. Uh, the NASDAQ 100 reclaimed back uh, all these supply zones, including uh, getting back above the 20-day moving average and putting in an aggressive, aggressive hammer, which is obviously a bull signal. If you look at everything else, you look at the SPY, same thing. You have this massive, massive hammer that the, you know, the candle turned green. Uh, all that SPX needs to do, let me give you guys a big level here, the SPX is a little bit of supply here at 5289. Everybody see that? That's this green line. That's a 10 day moving average. Um, for the bulls to kind of reclaim this rally or, you know, you know, definitely reclaim this uh, mo momentum from Friday's close, we're going to need a close and a reclaim of roughly around 5289 on the close to reclaim back the 10 day moving average. Uh, for all you guys who are brand new, if you guys remember Thursday's video, the five-day moving average, like I said, was super duper important. Whoever had control of the five will have control of short-term sentiment. Well, the 10-day, right, because the Qs, uh, the, excuse me, the SPX reclaimed the five on Friday. All they need to do is reclaim the 10, and that is the birth of the trade because it breaks all the the downtrend, uh, downtrend uh, prowess that we had uh, for the whole week. So crazy, crazy action. Uh, in this week, uh, NVIDIA, great trader all around, finally got pulled. We'll get to that uh, in a second. But going into this week, and this, here's our little issue. Here's our one little issue for Monday, okay? Because we had such a big rally into the close, a lot of stocks right now are in the middle of their channels. They're not at the top. They're not at the bottom. They're in the middle. So what does that mean? That means Monday, you can see a lot of in layman's term, you can see a lot of chop, right? You can see a lot of chop because the stocks are not going to reclaim the top of the channels. They're not going to, uh, to retest the bottom of the channels. They're kind of right in between. So but when we say going into a day like that with mental preparation, if you know stocks are going to, going to be in the middle of their channels, right? Like if you give you a perfect example of a stock in the middle of the channel, <laughs> right? So if you know a stock is going to be in the middle of the channel, Here's where I talk to the new traders and I really tell them something that I think it's going to benefit your career in the long term. Okay, Your job is just to get to the next day to extend your shelf life. When the market is in the middle of their channels, uh, I, I, you know, it's a res day. Okay? It's, a, it's, a, it's a res day. So when the market rests, okay, you rest. Okay, you, You're not supposed to go heavy. You're not supposed to be trading options, buying premium. Just relax. Let the market do the heavy lifting for you. Let them take out the machete and start cutting down the trees to open up a pathway so you can see a clearer path to the goal line. So when you start a session, and you can see it in every single chart, if you do your chart work this weekend, you can see it. When you have stocks in the middle of their channels, prepare mentally to rest on Monday. Prepare. Again, we could have a pleasant surprise and something wakes up and something weighs down uh, that we set alerts to you know, two, three weeks ago. And that's great. That's a wonderful, wonderful thing. But the point is, when you know mentally stocks are in the middle of the channel and there is a chop factor that could potentially be into play, and it pretty much should be based on these stocks close, tell yourself, okay, you know what? I'm going to take a mental res day. I'm not going to take a day off, but I'm going to take a mental res day. If I get something great, if I get some, maybe a bounce on a strong stock, maybe a rejection on a weak stock, maybe I'll see some option flow to come in, maybe trade something that I've seen uh, for a number of weeks that is finally starting to wake up. And that's cool. But be mentally prepared to saying to yourself, look, I have a long career ahead of me. The last thing I want to do is play a 2-7 offsuit. If I get something, I'm surprised. Hey, more power to me. Who's better than me? But the point is go into it with no expectations. When you have no expectations, you have no disappointment. So let's talk about uh, the pivots on Friday. I mean, phenomenal. I mean, again, we were prepared for this. We talked about this on Thursday it was really good. It was really, really good. And again, you don't get days like this every single day, but um, we were prepared and that's the most important part of this whole uh, episode. So uh, really, and we were watching to the upside, never, you know, never get got close to 11 and a quarter. Here's where the channel started breaking down. Meta, we talked about, uh, we talked about actually every single one of these 
uh, setups on the Thursday video. But Meta, 464.71, if it builds below, can flush. Here is Meta. Let me just show you guys all this on the 60-minute channel, just to show you how, how aggressive it was. So here's Meta, right? Took down this whole uh, 460, 464.70s channel, traded all the way down. It was down 10 at one point. Just an incredible, incredible move. Obviously, an incredible recovery. Uh, Amazon got murdered. Again, we talked about the softness of Amazon now for a number of weeks. Uh, 178.35, if it builds below, can flush. Here was Amazon, right? Same thing. Look at this move here. I mean, just, just absolute flush. Look, the flush went all the way down to 74. Uh, absolutely huge flush. This was the big one, right? This was the big one. Uh, the natural pivot here was 1096.63. We actually, I, I started shorting this thing at 1107. The reason why we started shorting this thing at 1107, by the way, you guys are, like I said in the webinar, you guys are very bad influences on me. I had no intention of shorting it at 1107. I was going to wait all the time for the, this 1096 uh, breakdown, but it stopped at 1107 twice on the 60 minute channel. So we said, we had this brain, brainstorm conversation in the webinar. At first we were like joking around, but we were like, oh, this damn thing is not rallying. And now it's held 1107 twice. If it's, you know, if it breaks it, who knows? Maybe we get down to 1096. You guys are all bad influences on me. So Vazel, you especially, big shout out to Vazel. <laughs> big, big shout out to Vazel. So we shorted it at 1107. Um, it confirmed 1096. And man, oh man, what a move. What a move on NVIDIA. It really was. So it took down all these channels, right? So here's the 1107, right? You see this candle here? 1107. It traded all the way down, all the way down to 1069 before a tremendous rally. But again, that was definitely uh, the trade of the day, which again, which, which really proves the point, folks. You don't need to guess I kept on saying this the whole rally on NVIDIA. You don't need to guess what the top is. All you need is a point of reference. And once it takes out the previous day's channel, and in this case, if you watched the, the uh, Thursday video, it was the five day. Once it took out the five day, that was the move. I mean, that was the move. So in, in, in the future, folks, stop trying to guess tops. These things are runaway trains, man. Once they lose the previous day's channel, and especially on a major rising support like the five day, you have a higher probability of success. So great move on that. Microsoft got murdered in the morning before uh, a tremendous rally. Again, like everything else, uh, 14, uh, 414 24, if it builds below, uh, can flush. Here was uh, Mr. Softy. Look at this move here, man. Look at, look at, look at Microsoft. Look at Microsoft. Took down that 414 14 level, traded down another 10 points. Every stock I'd hit the at least 10 points. It's just an incredible, incredible wash. Uh, ENVX never got out there. I still like this ENVX going into this week. Never got there. And the Q's got a hammer. I mean, hammer. We talked about this level. I, told, I gave you guys this level on Thursday's video. 450.20 if it builds below can flush. Again, I thought this thing was going to get down to 448. Yeah, I, yeah, 448 my ass. Uh, 448 went all the way down to uh, 443 before just an absolute... Uh, amazing reversal. So that's it, guys. That's it. If you are interested in pivots, guys, there's a link below. There's a discounted 30-day uh, trial. Kick the tires. See if pivots are right for you. Again, is it right for everybody? I don't think so. Like, you have a $50 account. No, it's not going to be for you. Uh, but the point is, uh, if you are considering pivots and something uh, that you have been considering, check it out for 30 days. I think it's something that you might like. Guys, have an amazing uh, amazing weekend. Hope everybody is doing well and God's help. I will see you all on Monday. Take care.